0.28. So now I suppose really with portfolio A, so with portfolio with portfolio A, the minimum return, don't forget, we have Z is equal to the uh, the minimum return level of the portfolio minus the expected return level of the portfolio divided by a standard deviation. Okay, So in our case here, we have minus 1.28. Minus 1.28 has to be equal to this minimum return level minus the expected return of the portfolio, which is portfolio A, its expected return is 8, divided by a standard deviation, which is 3. So in this case here, we have to find RL. In the previous case, what we had to find was the probability of observing Z. Okay? So in this case here, we need to find RL, and then we'll choose the one that has the largest. So you can see what's happening here. If I multiply across by 3, this is minus 1.28 times 3 is equal to RL minus 8. Okay? So what does that give us? That gives us uh, minus 1.28 times 3 gives us a value of minus, minus 3.84 is equal to RL minus 8. Bring the 8 over, so this is 8 minus 3.84 is equal to RL. So we have 8 minus 3.84 gives us a value of 4.16. So 4.16% would be equal to RL. That would be our minimum pain threshold with respect to portfolio A. Uh, what about for portfolio B? What is this minimum threshold value that would have 10% of the area to the left hand side of it? Okay, so with respect to portfolio B, so for portfolio B, uh, we have that Z is equal to RL minus its expected return divided by its standard deviation. So Z, uh, actually Z is minus 1.28, so it's minus uh, 1.28 is equal to well, we want to find out what the minimum minimum return is, uh, and it's minus its ex it's minus its expected value, which is 11%, divided by its standard deviation, which is 5. So in this case here, we end up if I multiply across by 5, this gives us minus 1.28 times 5 is equal to RL minus 11. Okay, what do we get here? We have uh, minus 1.28 times 5 gives us a value of six minus six point four. When I bring the eleven across this gives us eleven minus six point four is equal to R L. So for per foot when I add eight onto that, so that gives us oh let's say add on another eight, eight, eight and add on another three. So that gives us a value of it's I suppose it's four point six. Okay. So we have four point six percent is equal to R L. So the minimum percentage yeah okay that we should fall below okay or that we don't want to fall below is 4.6 percent that percentage has 10 percent of the area to the left hand side of it okay so we don't if we don't fall below that we know that we haven't fallen into this into this uh this particular risky area if that makes sense okay and finally we have portfolio c so for portfolio C, um, Z is equal to this minimum return level minus the expected return of the portfolio divided by the standard deviation. And once again, we have, well, we have Z is minus 1.28, okay? That's how much, minus 1.28 is the Z score has 10% of the area to the left-hand side of it. That's all the alpha, okay? Is equal to RL minus R bar, which is, in this case, it's 14% divided by the standard deviation which is which is 8 okay so what do we get here and uh, we get this is minus 1.28 times 8 is equal to RL minus 14 so we have minus 1.28 times 8 gives us a value of it's minus 10 so when I bring the 14 over this is 14 minus 10.24 is equal to RL so when I add on 14 that gives us a value of 3 3.76 percent is equal to RL okay now, so now we have our three values, okay, we have the minimum, okay, percentage, yeah, okay, is 4.6% for, for portfolio A, it's, for, sorry, it's 4.16, it's 4.6% for, for portfolio B, and it's 3.76% for, for portfolio, for portfolio C. So what we're saying here is this, is that we'd only drop below 4.16%, yeah, if we invested in portfolio A, we'd only drop below that 10% of the time. Whereas for portfolio B, we'd only drop below 4.6% of the time, 4.6%, uh, 10% of the time if we invested in portfolio B. And with respect to portfolio C, we'd fall below 3.76% of a return level, okay, 10% uh, of the time if we invested in portfolio C. So I think it's quite clear that what we'll actually do is we choose the one that gives us the maximum return, okay, in which case that's portfolio B, okay. So in this case, we'll choose, 
will choose uh, portfolio B based off Katoma's criteria or Katoka's uh, uh, criteria, which tells us uh, to select the portfolio that offers the highest minimum return. Okay, consistent with the risk level. Don't forget this was calculated with 10% of the area to the left hand side of it. Okay. So this is the one that has the highest return uh, with consistent with the risk level of, of 10%. Okay, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope that this video was in some way intuitive. And once again, more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.